Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage. Today we're gonna to be working on the 39 Ford Coupe project that uh, we made shiny in the last video. So now we have to get back to doing some uh, work to this car to actually make it roadworthy. Uh, in the last video, I think we kind of hinted at or showed a little bit of the brake lines uh, on the car are a little questionable. The, the master cylinder was leaking uh, pretty badly, so it needed to be rebuilt. And uh, so we decided, and also the rubber hoses were pretty crappy. So we decided we're gonna overhaul all the brakes, go through, rebuild the, the master cylinder, go through all the wheel cylinders, replace all the brake lines, soft lines, all that stuff. We're also gonna replace the hard line uh, for the fuel system because that's also just a little bit crusty. More than likely, a lot of this stuff is original, so we wanna go through and make sure that it's safe and we don't spring a leak in anything when we first start driving it again. What I'm gonna work on while Steve's doing that is uh, doing the exhaust system on the car. We showed in some of the first videos that the exhaust system is super sketchy. Um, it was cobbled together, it has pipe uh, fittings and things on the exhaust that's terrible and uh, and also it's rusty and leaking in places so we're gonna work on getting all that uh, exhaust removed this car did have a dual exhaust already put on it so it's not the factory single exhaust so we're gonna continue with the dual exhaust thing but we're gonna be putting some Fenton cast iron exhaust manifolds on it with some slightly larger uh, tubing on the exhaust get this thing sounding good, and most important, we have a complete exhaust system that's not leaking and banging against the floor and all that stuff. So we get up in the air, get the old exhaust off. We'll show you what it looks like after we get it off, and I'll start building up another dual exhaust for another early Ford. So let's get started. All right, well, we're gonna be changing the fuel line, and then gonna make the job easier and remove part of this half of the exhaust too while we're at it, because that's coming off too. First, we have to get the heat shield off of there, which I think is just an old asbestos house top. Oh. Yep, old asbestos tile. piece of gas pipe.
All right, so Steve got the old exhaust system removed and on the floor here. Don't think we're gonna be keeping much of anything out of this. Number one, you could see we were using literally cast iron pipe fittings. He had brazed together um, to fit the crossover and you know the elbows and all of this stuff. You could see this stuff was leaking pretty badly. I mean, we're using, you know, metal banding like you would use in your house. Um, there's some original stuff, like this is an original piece of exhaust here. Uh, Steve noticed that what, the one tailpipe was a fence post, do you think? Yeah, it's like a fence post from like a chain link fence. He just heated it up and bent it. Yeah, it's, it's galvanized. <laughs> and then he's got a sleeve here with literally radiator hose clamps on it that was supposed to, I guess, clamp that tight somehow. And uh, we did have some mufflers on it. Everything was done pretty crudely. Steve mentioned that the stuff, what, it all came apart like... Yeah, it all slid apart like he wanted to make sure it, it, he could get it apart again if he ever wanted to, so he didn't tighten anything. <laughs> so it was just leaking at every joint. Yeah. And then we, al we also noticed then the exhaust manifolds. I was like, oh, maybe we'll save these. And this one here must have broke. We don't really know what happened, but there is some gobs of braze here with a piece of iron put over a hole. You could feel it on the inside. So I don't know if this thing got dropped and broken or who knows what happened, but that definitely is no good. Um, so these are pretty easy to find. So we'll probably just scrap them. And if somebody down the line ever wants to restore this car 100%, um, they can just get cast iron exhaust manifolds. So got all this stuff on the gr off and on the ground. It's gonna go right in the scrap trailer, unfortunately. And we're gonna start fresh. I got a bunch of bends. I'm gonna be doing inch and three quarter exhaust on this. Some of the cars I do a lot larger exhaust, like not a lot larger, but two inch exhaust. This car, because it's basically a stock flathead, we're trying to keep it pretty mild. Uh, I'm gonna do the smaller size exhaust. It makes it a lot easier when you are building the exhaust that we don't have to cut into the frame. Uh, because of the smaller diameter exhaust, we could fit it through a little easier. So I'm going to get it up in the air, and I'm going to start working on getting our first bends figured out on the uh, exhaust. All right, so I'll show you guys what I'm working on. This first pipe on this driver's side is a major pain in the butt. I have a lot of time already into this. I had to create up in there, I had to create a bend. So my mandrel bends that I bought and I'm cutting up just didn't do exactly what I needed. So I ended up having to kind of create a custom bend where I cut a sliver out and put a wedge in to make it all flow so it's not um, blocked. And I just got a tack to the flange in there, but you can see and it kind of has to go uphill really fast and then turn again and then turn another time. I have another little like 30 degree bend or something there and then it has to weave around the master cylinder and the pedal and the pedal just, when the clutch pedal's all the way down, just barely clears or just might kiss, but doesn't really affect anything. So what I'm trying to do now is I gotta start coming back uphill. I might shorten this straight pipe and uh, come back uphill and get in that big hole there to the right. And then we could start, we're kind of like home stretch, so to speak, because then we'll put the, I usually put the muffler in right about here, and then we'll come through in the back and go, I haven't decided yet, either under or over the rear, but 
that little section there on all these cars is a pain in the butt. This side, you can see Steve already put the little stub in uh, that comes on the manifolds. And that one, oops, that one there just bolts on and comes right through where we need it to be because steering box on the other side causes a problem as always with early Fords. So that one's pretty good. I could almost do a straight shot with that um, back through that same hole there. So I'm not too worried about the passenger side but this uh, driver's side is a pain in the butt. So once I can get this to this brace here to where the muffler will be, I'll probably jump back over to the other side, get it caught up, and then we'll slowly work our way back. Alright, so Steve is working on making some <laughs> brackets uh, for our tailpipe mounts, or exhaust mounts rather. So we usually just take some eighth inch steel and bend up some brackets and then we use, we just have a bin of rubber spacers. I'm sure most people have this type of thing. So we do all these picks and different stuff and again body mounts and things. We have all different shapes of rubber spacers. So that's what we use for our exhaust hanger mounts we usually make little stands and um steve has he can kind of see probably not actually let me light this up so you can see here steve has one that he made it goes down and will mount somewhere around there i haven't tack welded it yet but that'll get um tack welded to the pipe and then that rubber spacer gives you a little bit of play so we've already got this side he painted it up a little bit painted over the red mufflers so that they're not in sight and we got the pipe going all the way up over down i had to do a couple little pie cut relief cuts here just to get the tailpipe to bend up and look right when the car was down um, just because of the way on these cars you have to come up and over the rear stay real high so that the rear doesn't bang on the exhaust and then through the spring down next to the gas tank and then you have to quick bring it back up so that it's parallel with the back of the body so Took a bunch of little um, 
these little pie cuts I did or little slices because it was such a little angle that by the time I would cut out uh, my mandrel bends, I'd be using about 3% of the mandrel bend because you're doing like a eight degree bend. So I still have some left, but used the majority of the stuff up. So of course, typical to my luck, we were having trouble. I got some exhaust from my friends at a shop down the street. They had 17 feet. The pieces come in two 10 foot sections. We are literally like, uh, so he had taken three feet off of uh, one section and we are just that much short on this side compared to that side. So Steve ran down to the parts store and grabbed a tailpipe section because nobody really had anything in stock in this size. So I'm gonna just butt weld it to that piece and we'll do our little relief cuts and get it all looking right. But we are just about ready. Um, we just gotta blow a few things apart, paint them, um, put the last couple mounts on and then clamp it all together and start it up and hear what it sounds like, can't wait. Just moved after welding up those little pie cuts here. Just watch your, oh, yeah. <laughs> watch your hand there, it's still a little warm. I would imagine. We're gonna put one up. Probably gonna need another rubber under this. Oh, okay. Because it's naturally wanting to sit down. So if you pull this up, it's going to have an air gap under it, so we'll probably have to use a little bit thicker of a rubber in the okay. front. This is the good one. Is this the one that hangs? Getting close on that. One. Come on, stop bouncing. <laughs> Two degrees, maybe. Oh, wow. She would stop bouncing. Well, then the digital one will tilt it right away. Mm -hmm. One. But it's, I think it's on the opposite side. Oh, okay. Yep. Like, well, actually, I should still like this. Yeah, that's the other side of the zero. That's two the other direction. This one's like, I'm actually getting like five right now. Getting like four or five on that one, so if we keep it the same direction, we're getting 
like one or two, so right. it needs to come five more mm -hmm. degrees, yep. which means we're going to need to, I may need to bring that down a little bit, but right. we'll see what happens. Well, I mean, it'll... Yeah, that's true. We can let it droop we'll a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Then we may have to adjust back there. We'll see. Okay, so I'll do... What's this one? One, two, three, four. I think I did six in this one. Yeah. I would just do six because I think it's enough. <laughs> I think when I do those cuts from doing other stuff, it's usually like two or three degrees per cup. Yeah, okay. So that would make sense if yep. the five yeah. off, two cuts would be right in that. Right where you need to be. Yep. Mm -hmm. currently two degrees maybe half a degree or one degree in the right direction correct mm -hmm. direction so this one I, here didn't close up at all though I mean this one here isn't even bent. I can still see the light straight through it oh you're gonna see light because it touches in the center and won't touch in the sides okay they're both they're pretty much touching but they will as you weld will get you know maybe when I close it like that it's getting me there you go, now it moved. We're getting two. So when I yeah. weld them, you're probably gonna gain in one each. So we'll probably be- well, that put us right in the vicinity there, yeah. All right, so I'll do that. I'll weld them up. That'll probably get us basically what we need. Yeah, right. And then we'll- uh... All four or five and this one's three four so I would say that's I can't four. they're within a degree or so of nice. each other I, I couldn't I don't think I could get that any better mm-hmm nice. I got you
This is the least exciting exhaust video. There wasn't like shit flying out the exhaust. Like, I think that was there. Come on. Uh, no, that was probably out of the exhaust. It's right for those exhaust manifolds. Oh. They a box in the trunk of a yeah, car. Yeah, yeah, And I think I did clean some crap out of them. It probably was. Maybe there was stuff that flew out of the exhaust. I didn't even know. Oh, my goodness. I think when I took them out of the box, I noticed that there was some crap in there. They were in a pretty okay. junky box. Brake lights work. You're good. Doing good. So, got the car outside, got the exhaust all finished, obviously, and it sounds uh, perfect. It's exactly what we were looking for. We're definitely going with a moonshine type, you know, subdued car um, where at idle it sounds not like anything, a little more than stock, but it's very quiet. You get on it, it makes some noise, but uh, this is the whole idea with this car is subdued. So, uh, that's why we painted the exhaust black, we, used, we kept the small exhaust. Uh, pipes all the way through and in the back so that it's just doesn't shout at you it just looks like something a little more than stock but overall it just everything looks almost original so that is a one of the last big upgrades we got brakes now we got exhaust it sounds good we got a couple little odds and ends to go over but mainly it's a lot of it's just cleaning and and doing that kind of stuff we're gonna have to get it back on the lift eventually and wire brush and clean the whole underside of the car and then use some kind of rust encapsulator just to seal up any of the very light surface rust that's on the bottom of the car otherwise it's just a matter of maintaining and drive the wheels off of it so uh, very very fun i'm super excited the warm weather is just coming so now we can start driving this thing putting some miles on it and just enjoy this neat old car so uh, thank you guys for following along. Let me know what you think of the new exhaust sound of the 39 Ford Coupe. Thanks guys. Catch you later.